An application for a recount of votes by Makefu, then sitting MP Tofuapuletama, who was a candidate in this year's general election, was quashed by Judge Wilson Isaac. However, the appellant's application for a judicial review was last week dismissed by the Niue Court of Appeal. This means Salilo Tongia, who defeated sitting MP Tofuapuletama by one vote, retains the Makefu seat. As the new Court of Appeal failed to find any defect in the decision of the judicial review carried out by Judge Wilson Isaac, the court rejected an application from the Crown for costs. Legal representative for Mr. Puletama said the Court of Appeal has ruled that's the end of it. But he said this matter indicates that when voting matters are raised before the elections, Proper procedures has to be undertaken. Apart from the Makefu electorate, only one other village questioned the procedures pertaining to the legality of a voter in the Hikutawake electoral roll. A drive by the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries to regulate interactions with whales has been discussed by stakeholders on the island and it is expected that some of the results will look to draft a legislation that will govern the protected species. The dialogue debated areas that is hoped to increase awareness of operators and the general public regarding interactions with the giants of the seas, as well as setting guidelines needed for those who work or has an interest in the industry. Those are to increase the distance operators can allow to interact with whales from 50 metres to 100 metres. The other issue discussed is for people not to allow swimming within the vicinity of mother and calf, as well as reducing the number of vessels allowed to operate. The discussions also address concerns from the public and well advocates over the operational guidelines lacking within the industry to ensure the protection of whales. Director of Environment, Sauni Tongatule, who signed the International Agreement on the Convention of Migratory Species said, Niue need to comply with international standards and we are far from reaching those compliance. Mr. Tongatule said his department fully support the drive by DAF to encourage regulating of operations within the industry. There need to be an understanding of our tour operators, fishing vessels and others that guidelines are developed for the protection of whales, but more so for people who get too close to them. He said there has to be a regulation for all sectors involved to adhere to the guidelines. Some of the NGOs involved in the discussion said government need to accelerate changes to accommodate this necessary need for the industry. To not act will hinder the growth of the industry and impact the whales. There must be a law in place for the protected species and this will develop the in tourism industry. The island, which saw many visitors travel in each year for whale watching, must ensure one of the major resources for the island is protected for sustainable tourism development. Unfortunately, we were not able to receive a comment from some of the stakeholders at the meeting. Passengers may have been caught off guard last Friday with the changes to the flight schedule. As New Zealand switched to daylight savings on the 25th of September, last Friday's flight was the first to operate on the new schedule. However, Friday's flight arrived earlier than expected at 12.15, some 30 minutes ahead of schedule. Sources say that when the plane landed, passengers were still checking in. Travel agents say, despite information and announcements of the changes, some passengers still turn up for check-in at the last minute. Passengers travelling out of Niue are reminded that check-in starts at 8.30 a.m. and the plane arrives at 5 minutes to 1. Following these schedules will avoid any disappointment. The airport was buzzing last Friday not only due to the flight schedule changes, but an incident with a rental vehicle bursting into flames in the car park was cause for some commotion. 
Some people were in shock, while others amazed at this out-of-the-ordinary occurrence. Witnesses on the scene say that this was a lucky escape as attempts to put the fire out failed when extinguishers from nearby departments failed to work. The speedy action by those present to push the vehicle away from other motor vehicles to avoid any further acceleration to the problem. The fire department located at the airport were on hand to assist but experienced their own problems as the fire truck was delayed awaiting a refill of the water tank. With this latest incident, are we really prepared for fire safety? Fortunately, the fire was put out and no one was hurt. Cricket tournaments planned for the Constitution celebrations between local teams and visiting New Orleans have been confirmed for the men's. The list consists of five players from each team, sees 45 selected to meet the visitors. One of the organizers, Joe Makito, said the reason the numbers exceeded the original number 30 is so each village can have three selected players and two reserves. The nine teams include Mat Mutalo, Lakepa Liku Hakupu, Vaiya Avasele Tamakotonga Makefu, and combined team of Higitawaki and Toy. Champions Tuapa, who took out overall tournament for 2011, has decided to give other villages a chance for the combined team. Instead, concentrating on its own game with the visitors that is proposed as the first game on Saturday the 15th of October. Second runners-up, the Tonga is scheduled to compete with the visitors on Tuesday the 18th of October. New National Team is scheduled to compete on Friday the 21st of October with the final test scheduled to take place on the 25th of October. The visiting teams are expected to arrive on the island next week. We'll bring you more news regarding the women's competition on Thursday. To end our news bulletin for tonight, New Year's oldest living centurion, Mokasehina Toi of Alufi, celebrated her 102nd birthday yesterday, surrounded by friends and families. Born on the 3rd of October 1909, Mokasehina married Toi of Alufi, one of the few New Iron soldiers to return following the World War. According to a family member, Mokasehina and Toi had 11 children, with which just may be a secret behind her longevity. Some families made the special trip from New Zealand to celebrate this momentous occasion held at the Pacific Way Bar and were thankful for the many years they have spent with the matriarch of the family. Mokasehina has spent much of her life in Niue with her youngest daughter, but as times making the trip to New Zealand to spend time with her other three daughters and many, many grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and even a great-great-grandchild. Interesting enough, Mrs. Doyle's celebration was a joint party to celebrate the 80th birthday of one of her daughters. All are hoping for another joyous occasion is this year, and wish Mokasehina Doi well. That's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening.